Welcome to the next lecture of our course, Mocking with Wiremock.net. And in this lecture, we'll be talking about working with static mappings files. As I told you, power of the Wiremock.net is not only just mocking of the endpoints, but also how you can run the whole Wiremock itself. So as you can see, all these days, we have been talking about the power of the Wiremock.net itself, like how you can start the server, how you can register all the steps, and how you can use them, and how you can look at them using the admin interface. And there are even more power available within the Wiremock server, not just about mocking the application itself. That is not the only thing that we are discussing in this particular series, but also we're discussing about the power of the Wiremock server itself. And one of the important power that I wanted to show you is the static mapping file. So what is the static mapping file itself? So if you just go to the Wiremock net server project over here, and then if you just open this particular project in the folder explorer and you will see that there is a bin folder and there is a debug folder and there is a dotnet 8 folder so this is available for every dotnet project as you know but you will notice that there is no folder specific to wiremock.net like admin folder or whatever whatsoever in here so there is no such folder for now so even if you just search for probably admin and hit enter you'll notice that there is no such folder available which is fine because there is no such folder exist at the moment. What we are going to do this time is we are going to go to our wiremock.net and set up in such a way that we wanted it to actually have an static mapping being created once I start the server. So what does that mean? So if I just see this is the server instance of the wiremock.net and this is registering all the different stubs for us and otherwise called as mappings for us because this is a stub mapping. And once it is all registered, I'm also telling the wiremock.net that, hey, just try to save all the static mappings for me. So I'm gonna do that over here. So once I do this, it is going to save the entire static stub mapping for us into the bin folder. So if I try to run this particular wiremock.net server application and without doing anything, if I just close the application and now if I just go to the folder explorer and if I try to refresh this particular folder, you'll notice that we have got an underscore underscore admin folder and there is a mapping folder in that. Within the mappings folder, you'll also notice that there are many different mappings available. You will notice that there are a list of all these particular GUID coming up. And this GUID is exactly the one which is matching to this particular mappings folder here. So that, so every single time while I try to run this particular project, it is going to create a new mappings for us. So it's always important that you always refresh the mapping if you wanted to. So this is the right way of you to doing it. So basically, you don't have to always keep running the exact same thing again and again because it's going to keep creating a different version of the mapping because it doesn't know the GUID name because the GUID is always going to be keep on changing. It's always better that you only run one single time and it's going to create the bindings for you uh, or the mappings for you. So if I try to refresh this, you see that we have got the mappings over here. So now using this mappings, let me also see what is the content of this mapping. And you'll notice that this is exactly the same mapping that we tried before. You see that it is a get address from object and has got a body from the JSON for Prashant, Chennai and country as India. So that's exactly the same thing, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to our Wiremox server over here. And this time, instead of me running it from the static mapping that we have already registered. I'm just going to comment this whole code, something like this. So you can see that there is no mapping defined whatsoever. And this time, I'm going to tell the Wiremock server to read from the static mapping file that we have already got, which is nothing but this particular folder. So that's what I'm going to tell the wiremock.net to do for us. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to add one more property here saying read static mapping to true. And once you save this, and if you try to run the wiremock.net server this time, 
And if you just go to the postman and just change it to get address of one. And if you try to hit send this time, you'll notice that it is still going to work for us. And the reason why this is working is because this time it is reading from the static mapping that we have got over here. So this is the power of our wiremock.net. And you may be asking like, Karthik, how does it know that this has to read from this underscore underscore admin folder all the time? So what if I don't really have this particular folder? Well, guess what? This is the default location that wiremock server is gonna keep looking at that particular location. But if you're gonna change that particular location, it is just not going to work. For instance, we just gotta go to the admins folder and if you just change it to admins or whatsoever, uh, and let's say if I try to run the wiremock.net and if I go to the postman and if I hit send, you will get this uh, no matching uh, mapping found because it is just looking to this particular folder all the time. So this folder location is super important. And maybe you may have a scenario where you may need to watch for the new mappings automatically coming up for you, which you can do it as well. Well, you can do this using what is called as a watch static mappings method. Using this method, you can watch to that particular location. So if you just do control space, you will see that the folder location by default is going to be current folder slash admin slash mappings. But if you want to locate a specific location of the folder, you can do that as well. So this is how we can actually work with the static mappings in the wiremock.net and this is very very handy while we work in a larger project where we can define all the mappings that we need in one single place and then we can start using that mappings from the wiremock server itself instead of setting up all these ceremonies that you are doing over here because that is going to be very very painful and instead you can actually just use the static mapping alone. And not only that, in our next lecture, we'll be talking about how we can create this whole static mapping from an application itself using Swagger documentation. And from then, how you can create all of these so much easily instead of you writing all of these manually, which you have been writing all these days and making it even more easier with wiremock.net.